Apple's modern take on the small iPhone was not as well received as they had hoped. The sales were not very strong and now it seems that the 13 mini might be the last of its kind. But aside from a few not so obvious caveats, I think the iPhone 13 mini is a tremendous phone that will never get the praise it deserves. I think this is the best iPhone you'll never buy. And here's why. So before we talk about the surprising display, we need to get a better perspective of the size. So here it is next to the regular iPhone 13 and the 13 Pro Max. And one thing that surprises a lot of people when they pick up the mini for the first time or after using it for a good amount of time is that it's not as small as they originally expected. Yes, it's more compact than any previous modern iPhone, but it's not too small to type on like the original iPhone SE, for example. You have a width of 2.53 inches to house that 5.4 inch OLED display. And due to that near edge to edge display, most of that space is occupied by glass and not by bezel. Now, after picking up the 13 mini again here in 2022, after using the regular iPhone 13 and the 13 Pro Max for a while, you know, it did take a while to get used to kind of the button placements of the phone. So like for example, in Snapchat, I'll still accidentally press send instead of backspace or with music, I'll sometimes open up the queue instead of skipping to the next track all because I made like a habit of pressing certain areas on my regular sized iPhone and the position is just slightly different on the mini. So it does take a couple of days to get used to, but after you do get used to it, you will probably start to prefer it. I mean, you can do everything with one hand and that's something you cannot say with a max sized iPhone these days. Even if you had the biggest hands, it's really hard to use with one hand. Even with my iPhone 13, I sometimes have to use two hands to comfortably type or take a picture, especially if I'm laying down, you know, on my side in the bed. The 13 mini, I never have any issues with using completely one handed. And I love that, you know, it's going to fit in all sizes of pockets and it's not going to bounce around all over the place or stick out of your pocket and just have somebody steal it. Now, the reason I said that the iPhone 13 mini has a surprising display is because number one, it's OLED. This compact powerhouse packs a 5.4 inch super retina XDR display with a higher pixel density than any of the other iPhone 13 models. It also has a 2 million to one contrast ratio and true tone. However, it does not have the 120 hertz refresh rate like the iPhone 13 Pros do. It's still just a 60 hertz display, just like the regular iPhone 13. But the most surprising part, well, it gets just as bright as the regular iPhone 13 at 800 nits, and it can even get as bright as the Mac Daddy 13 Pro Max when watching HDR content at 1200 nits of max brightness. That makes this phone just that much more fun to use. Like if the display was LCD and the brightness was what it was on the iPhone 12 mini, I would honestly probably not enjoy using it as much as I do now. And it's not even because I watch a ton of videos. I'll touch on that and why I think you've been lied to about the battery life in a minute, but it's because I can just tell a big difference when doing daily tasks like web browsing, texting, and jotting down notes, especially when I'm in direct sunlight, this phone just handles everything just like a phone twice its size would. And gaming is actually really fun on the iPhone 13 mini. Like, yes, I cannot see as much content as I can on a bigger phone, especially in a game like Call of Duty, I cannot see as much of the map, but it's still really enjoyable. And I think it just has to do with that one-handed use. The fact that I'm able to do everything with one hand is just something I love. And also, you know, same goes with videos. Yes, it's a much smaller display, but if you're anything like me and you listen to videos more than you actually like sit there and watch them, there's nothing wrong with the mini. However, if your phone is your main video consumption device and your main even gaming device, then you know that's where this guy loses a lot of points because I don't think it's perfect for video consumption or gaming, like your main gaming device. Yes, the brightness, the clarity, and just the overall display is awesome. But again, it's just a 5.4 inch display. There's only so much you could see on such a small display. So if you're gonna use your iPhone as your main you know, media consumption device, I would maybe go with the iPhone 13 or even step up to the 13 Pro Max. But on the other hand, applications like Canva, which is today's video sponsor, are surprisingly easy to use on the mini without feeling like you're sacrificing your workflow. So Canva is one of my favorite sponsors of the channel because their all-in-one design platform is easily the best on the market. You can use the app or their website on a desktop to create pretty much anything you can imagine from iPhone wallpapers to sophisticated Instagram stories to resumes and PowerPoints, Canva has everything covered. And instead of starting from scratch or buying a template online, they have an extensive collection of templates that are all drag and drop friendly. So instead of hiring a designer for your next project, 
just give Canva a try. I mean, I don't know if I can even say this, but I have honestly stopped using Photoshop for designing most things. I mean, I really just use it for thumbnails now, but I use Canva for making invoices, for party invitations, infographics, pretty much everything. And I'll use them for designing my Christmas cards later this year. I just love not having to start from scratch. And before, you know, the templates would always be very mediocre, but Canva has top notch quality templates. Like nobody's gonna know that you used a template as long as you change a few things up, which is honestly rare for a free service. However, Canva does also offer a pro version that gets you access to the very professional templates, the stock photos, music, tools, and more. Lately, I've been making business cards and invoices using these pro templates. And if you have a team, the pro version is an even easier decision because it allows you to collaborate with up to four other team members in real time. You get access to the content planner and more. So if you wanna test out the pro version of Canva free for 45 days, Click my special link down in the description below. You can cancel at any time, but this will at least give you, you know, kind of a peek at everything that Canva has to offer. And thanks to Canva for sponsoring this segment of the video. Now, here's why I think that you've been lied to about the battery life. Everyone said that it was bad when this phone first came out and it caught some heat for it. Not near as much as the 12 mini, which actually deserved the heat for its awful battery life. But here's the thing. Not only is the 13 mini significantly improved over the 12 mini in the battery department, but battery life has also improved over time through software updates. The iOS 15 updates have progressively improved the amount of on-screen time that I'm able to get out of this phone. And not only that, but I noticed that when I'm using the 13 mini, I just don't use it as much to watch media. I tend to go to my iPad, my computer, or my TV when I wanna watch a video or a movie. So battery life is honestly just about on par with my regular iPhone 13, given the type of usage on a day-to-day -day basis. So if anybody says the iPhone 13 mini has bad battery life, it's likely because they just don't know how to properly optimize the way they use their phone, or they just expect iPhone 13 Pro Max levels of battery life. But for me, I constantly get through a full day on one charge with my mini. Now, I do have to charge it before I get into bed for the night, but it's only because I don't like my battery level dipping below 20%, and it usually gets around there when it's time to go to bed. So the crazy thing is though, this phone gets better battery life than my iPhone 12 and my iPhone 10 R like on a consistent basis, which I think is pretty crazy given the size of the phone. Now, before I tell you about a massive caveat to the mini, we need to talk about something else that is kind of glossed over by most people. And that is the camera system. I don't know why, but most people think that when you see somebody taking a picture with a mini phone, that the quality is just not gonna be as good as the iPhone 13 or the iPhone 12. And that's just not the case. I mean, just making this video is making me realize how underappreciated this phone is. And the perception is just so wrong surrounding this phone because, you you know, we have the same dual 12 megapixel camera setup that we have on the regular iPhone 13. So we have one wide and one ultra wide lens. You get night mode, you get deep fusion, you get smart HDR4, photographic styles, and everything else you would get on the normal iPhone 13. There is no difference in the size of the lenses or the features that are offered with the mini compared to the regular 13. So the quality of the photos is incredible. I mean, I've talked about this in my iPhone 13 reviews, and especially when you see, you you know, the phone that took them, you're going to be so surprised. I love taking portrait shots, but even on the 13 series, you know, the edges are not perfect. It's a big improvement over the previous two generations, but it's still not perfect, especially when I try to take portrait shots of objects. It seems like the corners are just never what I want them to be. We unfortunately do not have macro mode like we do on the 13 Pro series. So I did miss being able to take those extra close up shots of objects and videos of objects up close. And same goes with Pro Raw and that glorious 2X zoom button in the camera. I hate having to manually zoom in and lose quality. So I was really missing that telephoto lens when I spent a few days using the mini here in 2022. I honestly don't use the 0.5X ultra wide lens very often, at least not for photos. I use it more for video. The front facing camera is also top notch. So the selfie quality is tremendous and the compact size of this mini just makes everything easier. Like even holding your phone up to take a selfie is just easier on the mini because you don't have to worry about it being too heavy or slipping out of your hands. But as usual, the video recording is where the magic really happens. So we can shoot in 4K 60 in HDR and you also have the new cinematic mode, 
which is exclusive to the 13 series and that does include the mini and this makes your videos look more cinematic by adding artificial bokeh and focus follows subjects which is pretty neat and like i just mentioned i noticed that i hold the mini much more steady than a normal sized iphone because i'm able to just grip and hold the phone much tighter so i'm basically more reckless with this phone because i can control it better i feel more confident with it in my hands so it's awesome to have no compromise in quality given the size and being able to just hold the phone like this it's just amazing really you have to use it if you haven't already and the 12 megapixel camera lenses only help so much when it comes to the end result of a photo or a video the real reason the photos and videos look so good is because of apple's post image processing it's their secret smart hdr and deep fusion technology and the chip behind all of that technology is Apple's A15 Bionic. This chip packs a six core CPU with two performance and four efficiency cores, along with a four core GPU and a 16 core neural engine. And if you don't know what any of that means, basically this phone is fast, efficient, and has a powerful neural engine, which helps with face ID accuracy, among other things. And as far as what I do on a daily basis on the 13 mini, I mainly just browse the web. I'll watch YouTube videos. I'll chat in my discord server. I'll send some text messages and some emails, but the mini just knocks everything out with ease. Even gaming is a breeze on this phone. Like it does get hot and I'll touch more on that here in a minute, but it knocks everything out. There really has not been anything I've thrown at this phone that it can't handle. There's never really been a time where an app crashed or just had a lot of lag. It's amazing to see that in such a small form factor these days. However, that significant performance in such a small frame does cause one of my very few caveats with this phone. And that is that it gets rather hot when performing intensive tasks like recording a lot of videos or playing a game for like 30 minutes or so. And this is something that was much worse on the 12 mini, but I'm rather surprised to still see it be an issue on the 13 mini. So maybe with future iOS updates, it's going to be improved. But for now, I just kind of avoid taking extra long 4K videos and playing games for more than 30 minutes or so. Now, with all that being said, should you still buy an iPhone 13 mini in 2022? And if you have one now, What's next? Is there going to be another mini iPhone? Should you upgrade to the 14 or what? So first off, yes, I think that you should absolutely consider the 13 mini if you're in the market for a new iPhone. They're $699 for a 128 gigabyte model. And while that is $100 cheaper than the regular iPhone 13, you can find an even better deal on Amazon or eBay. On Amazon, I see these going for about $590 for a refurbished model, or you can turn to eBay to get a mint condition used one for anywhere from about $520 to $600. And I would only go for the 128 gigabyte model if I were you. You shouldn't really need more than that. You can always upgrade your iCloud storage. But for this specific model, I would stick to the base 128. And with all of those brand new features that you get in such a small compact form factor, I think it's worth that price tag, even if you get it new, but especially if you go the renewed or used route. Now, if you currently have a 13 mini, should you consider upgrading Upgrading, and will there be another mini iPhone? Well, we don't know for sure what Apple's going to do yet, but rumors do suggest that Apple will not have a 14 mini, but rather the new mini iPhone will be the iPhone SE in the near future. And if that is the case, it will likely miss out on some of the flagship features in the future. So we could be looking at the final, you know, flagship mini iPhone that Apple is ever going to make. Now time will tell, but if I had a 13 mini now, I would hold on to it for at least a couple more years until we see what Apple does with this 5.4 inch form factor. But anyways, guys, there you have it. That is my review on the iPhone 13 mini after several months of usage. I think it's a tremendous phone. I think it's great for active people. I think it's great for busy people, people who just don't have a lot of time to be on their phone, but they need something small and compact that gets decent battery life. I think the 13 mini is a great option for a lot of people. But anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing if you want to see more iPhone reviews. And of course, I will be getting the new iPhone 14s later this year as well. So if you want to see coverage on that, make sure to subscribe to the channel. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.